Hello and welcome to Excel Olympics channel. My name is Gosh Bakamish and this week I'm going to show you how to highlight weekends. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to have a bunch of dates and we're going to use conditional formatting to highlight which of these happen on a weekend. Now this is going to be a tutorial in three parts. The first one will be easy but even the first one will show you how it helps to sometimes think outside the box in Excel, how it helps to be knowledgeable on, let's say, multiple uh, tiers in Excel. And I'm going to elaborate on this later. And then we're going to do some crazy shenanigans in part two, which will be uh, trying to highlight an entire row. Right? We're going to have a table, not just a single column of dates. We're going to have a table and we're going to try to highlight that table by the same condition. So is that date happening on a weekend? Once we do that, then we're going to go level 400 and we're just going to create a Lambda function and use that Lambda function within our conditional formatting to basically highlight rows in a table. Uh, the, the main thing is the basic formula we're going to talk about in the beginning is going to take us through the entire thing, right? So let's just start like this. So date, let's just bring in today's date. That's control and semicolon. So we got today's date and now let's just create a few dates. So a series of dates and what I want to show you first is how do we know which day that was? And I'm going to call this column weekday and I'm going to use shockingly a function called weekday, right? A weekday of this is five, right? And if someone was to look at this where I live, he would say, wow, that was a Friday. But it was not. So the 23rd of September 2021 was a Thursday. And the reason that this says five is this is the way the U.S. looks at weekdays. So Sunday is day number one. Monday is day number two and so on. And what I find interesting here is... If I wanted to write a function that would, or a condition that would basically say, is this a weekend, right? Which of these are actually weekends? Well, it's this one uh, and it's this one, I guess. So it's kind of hard to tell, right? Actually, it's this one and this one, right? This is my Sunday, this is my s Saturday. Again, I'm just confused because we, this would be our Saturday. So these two are weekends in the US. So what would my condition look like, right? What do these two have in common? And without going <laughs> basically uh, into technical detail and saying, I'm gonna do a mod, uh, sorry. So a module of this, I'm gonna, do a divide by six and see what I get. And, and in this scenario, these two are actually the same. And now my condition could then be, oh, just look if this equals one. But that is just, you know, this is just a bit too much, if you ask me, right? Uh, to realize if these are actually weekends. So what I would suggest is, why don't we just do this a bit differently. Why don't we say, well, give me a weekday of that date, but the way the Europeans do it, or at least Slovenians do it. So Monday is number one, Tuesday is number two, and then this becomes a far easier condition now. So this is still my weekend, right? But my condition here, if that is a date happening on a weekend, would be, is it greater than five? That 
That's all I need to do. And now I have a simple condition, right, without uh, modules and whatever. Um, this just says this is a weekend, right? And why this shows that it's actually good to know something you don't really need to know. And let me just elaborate on that. So if I have a weekday function, it looks like this. Now the, the first part of this function, you can see that the, the text is in bold, right? And that means this is something that needs to be uh, needs to be present if you want the function to work. Whereas this second argument is optional. You don't need this one. And indeed, maybe you noticed before, I didn't have it. But if I didn't have it, so if it's omitted, then Sunday is number one. But we don't want that, at least here, because that makes our condition so much easier. I just say, if it's greater than five. All right. So what I will do is return type two. And again, if I was living in the US, I wouldn't really need this to ever, right? Because it's not the way I think about dates. And yet here, it's so helpful. Now, why did I even show you this? Well, because the way we're going to highlight the the dates that happen on weekends is we're going to use conditional formatting and conditional formatting thrives on true false statements that's it that's what that, that's what it needs a true false statement and it will be something like this so highlight these home conditional formatting new rule basically you use a formula to determine which cells to format and the formula will be look if weekday of this cell and then you're going to notice it did the absolute reference i don't want an absolute reference so i'm going to press f4 three times i could also delete those two but this is way cooler and then i'm going to go two so return it in a way that monday is number one and then tell me if this is greater than five see now i got my true falses here and now, now I just say, and then here's the format I want. And let's just go with a beautiful Excel color, right? And let's do the font in a white then, because it's going to be contrasty. So like that, right? These are my weekends. Okay, so all good here. And now let's go to the highlight ins entire row if it happens on the weekend. So first off, let's do dates and let's do, so let's do January 1st of 2021. And then let's, so I'm gonna use the fill series command, but I'm gonna use it with a trick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna hold the right click. Then I'm gonna just juggle it around so it changes focus and gets back to it release it and i'm gonna say serious okay right? so fill serious a beautiful shortcut right there and then i'm gonna say okay i want this in a column it should be date it should just go each day and i want it to stop on december 31st of 2021 say okay so this is now my 2021 calendar kind of there okay and over here we're gonna need the rows and i'm just gonna go equals row of this cell so i'm not gonna give it a reference minus four because i want the first one to be one right so that's my id and it was minus four of course not minus one like this Right, I want the first one to be one. So we got our dates, we got this, and then I just did two more just so we'll have something to work with, right? And the month name will just be a text function. This is the value, and I want you to format it as MMMM -M -M -M, like this. Oh, 
there it is and this one will be very similar um, it will be a text function from the date but it will be a d d d d there it is right so we got the month name we got the name of the day and now we want the entire row to highlight if that day happened on a weekend so right here right here and so on and so on right but i want that to be dynamic so basically i take the formula that i already had but just embellish it a bit so the first thing i need to do is to highlight all the data or all the cells in this table why well because the conditional formatting needs to work on all my columns if I want the entire row to be highlighted. So I take it all and then I go conditional formatting, new rule. And again, I go use a formula to determine which cells to format. And then it's more or less this. So if weekday, that's the same as before, of this, but now I'm only going to press F4 two times. And what that does is it still has an absolute reference on the column. Not on the row, but on the column. Right? And I'm going to say 2 if that is greater than 5. That's my condition. But what this will do is even if it goes into D, let's say D7, and it's wondering if it should color D7, it's going to stay in row 7, but it's going to look at column C. So it's going to look at the date of that row if the weekday of that date is greater than 5. And if it is, it's going to highlight it. If not, then it's not going to. So this is my condition. I'm going to format this pretty much in the same way I did before. So green fill with white font and this is how that would look right pretty much as we expected this is also brilliant because if i have it highlighted then i can use the filter by color right which it is kind of brilliant in um you know a kind of brilliant filter to have because then your conditional formatting allows you to filter things out uh, with, with very tough conditions that your conditional formatting can have and even conditions on a different column right because now i can sort or actually filter the month name i can filter this one but i can filter this one by color Whereas the color is actually not even defined in this column. It's defined by another column and that's with conditional formatting. So this is a brilliant thing. But now, now let's go level 400. Let's just remove this one for a moment. So let's delete this one and let's take it a step further. So let's go into formulas, name manager. Let's create a new name. And let's call this name best thing ever. And what this will be, it will more or less be a lambda of, it's going to take a parameter, I'll call it A, but it will actually be our date. And what it will do is it will check if weekday of a comma two so it's going to give me monday one tuesday two and so on if that is greater than five so you see it's a function that returns what well it's a function that returns true false it doesn't return a weekday it actually does something with the weekday and it returns true false Right? And why would that be a best thing ever? Well, because true false is exactly what I need when I go to my conditional formatting. So highlight the table again, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. And this time the formula will just be equals best thing ever 
of oh that would not work best thing ever of and now i need to do the same trick as before so i take the take my date but then leave an absolute reference on the column leave the row as is and that's it because this one will return true false which is exactly what conditional formatting needs to then be able to give me a design that I need. So that was level 400, but it was a brilliant way of how lambdas can actually help you in, in all sorts of things, right? Because you can create a lambda, usually you would create a lambda as a help for a function. Um, so you, you can use it multiple times, so you can iterate, so you can do crazy things. But I use it as something to feed my conditional formatting because it just spits out true, false, true, false, true, false. And wherever it's true, that's going to get highlighted, right? So this is how you highlight your weekends. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.